Welcome this afternoon to our second webinar in this series of inspirational journeys where we're profiling, profiling five alumni journeys throughout May and June on Wednesdays. This afternoon I'm so pleased to welcome Jenny Okolo who is talking to us about how to combine what you love in your business and career. Jenny is a senior occupational therapist and the founder of She Aspires Skills Academy, a brand centered around a digital platform that asks young females to write and interact on a series of real world issues that affect them. She's passionate about female empowerment and has made it her mission to educate, encourage other women, as well as exploring through social activism, podcasting and numerous other public speaking um, engagements throughout Europe. She has been part of several impactful uh, campaigns such as My Body Victory and Prevent Breast Cancer. Jenny is an ambassador for Be Real, a project created by Dove, which involves supporting young people and redefining beauty. Jenny continues to be an advocate for the rights of women and aims to force new ways of thinking into tra traditional spaces. Welcome, Jenny. Hi, thank you so much for that Hi. lovely introduction. <laughs> How are you? I'm very well. I'm very well. I'm so pleased you're able to um, come today and attend uh, and present um, and tell us your story, um, be part of the series. Um, we've been having our conversations over the last month or so, and it's been so inspiring hearing, you know, what you've what you're doing with your two the diff two different careers. And um, it'd be great to explore that more. So we'll, we'll go through some questions together and the audience, if you've got any questions you'd like to um, propose to Jenny, we'll, if you put them on the question tab or chat chat tab at the bottom of the screen, and we'll have a section at the end for Q&A towards the end of the hour. So I'm, I'm just wondering, Jenny, what, what was the moment that everything changed for you? Um, can you describe when you decided to fully commit to your idea, your uh, founder of the SASA, the Academy of Skills um, for Women. When, when, did it, when did you first commit to the idea and, and what was the first step you, you, you made to make it possible? Yeah, um, so it just takes me back to the story of, you know, when I first, when I finished sixth form, when I came out of college, I was around 18, 19 years old. And I was just about to go to university, Oxford Brooks, of course. And um, I always knew um, that I, I was a quiet person um, growing up. Um, I was quite shy, um, but my thoughts, my ideas were so loud. Mm. Um, so you can just imagine that juxtapositioning, you know, where you've got about, oh, I want to become this when I'm older or... Um, I want to go into this area. <clears throat> so when I um, was about to go to university, I remember in that summer, I joined, I applied for a leadership program um, and I applied not thinking that I was going to get it. It was literally the night before um, the deadline. I just said, OK, let me just go for it. Let's see what happens. Um, and I got accepted. And this was a leadership program for young people who um, not necessarily wanted to be entrepreneurs but wanted to um, in different areas which also includes public speak uh, public speaking so um, I did that over the summer um, and it actually went right throughout the, the end of the year so one of the tasks that I had was to um, engage an audience and I knew I was going into university and I thought you know what I'm not going to know anyone. Most people here are, you know, going to be on the same page as me. We're, we're trying to make new friends, meeting new people. Let me see if I can connect with um, the union. So I did something with the union where I just gathered some people together um, as part of my task. And I think for me, that's when it clicked that actually, if I go for what was actually in my head all that time, um, in terms of you know meeting new people connecting um, building these um, communities that if I actually tried I could actually get quite far yeah. um, so it was around that 18 19 stage when I was going to university um, I was leaving home as well mm. so it was like that boost of confidence where I was like actually I, I finally get to be independent I finally get to have my own viewpoint and you know almost almost start afresh um, so it was definitely a turning point for me at that point. Um, and, 
you know, I, I always say to people who are off to university or even if they're, you know, going to live in a different town or just trying something new to, to actually make the most of it, embrace that change, embrace that fresh start uh, because it will do wonders. Um, and that's exactly what happened for me. That's good. To, yeah, no, it's exciting time that, doesn't it? And like you say, recreating and finding yourself. And uh, did that all happen um, hand to hand with, uh, you know, having the business idea or that how, how later, how much later was that in, in your time at Brooks that you, you thought, oh, I, I've got this great idea this, and I want to be an entrepreneur as, as you know, as well as being yeah. an occupational therapist you were, you were training to be, weren't you? Yeah. So, yeah, I, I went to study occupational therapy. Um, and like I said, I was still in that leadership program at the same time. I didn't at that mm. point that I was going to go into entrepreneurship or that I, I was even going to start, um, it was called She Aspires at the time. Um, it was just a project. I kept on naming it a project. I'm just working on a project. Um, and I do feel that now looking back in hindsight that um, as, as much as I say that I took that leap of faith and I had that um, moment that changed for me when I was 18, 19 years old, when I first started uni, um, I think I still there was still a bit of fear and there was still a bit of, you know, imposter syndrome and, and of like, you know, should I really be thinking that far ahead? Mm. Uh, because I kept referring to, um, you know, Sasa as you, you know it now as a project um, and as something that, oh, I'm just doing it on the side. I'm just doing it as part of this um, leadership program. Mm. Um, so I, I do feel like it, 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 it worked hand in hand, but it took a bit of time. Um, and, and that's why, you know, whilst I was at university, I was still, I was, I was working on it. But, and I think that's the, that's the best way to grow a business where you're testing the waters and you're not necessarily thinking too much about it. So you're just going with what you, you actually love and enjoy, um, as opposed to, you know, someone who might feel like they need to start a business because not everybody has to. Um, you've also got to think about your strengths and your weaknesses and what your actual passion is. So mm. I never, I was never the sort of person that said, I have to own a business. I have to go down this route. It just came from, actually, I want to try something new and let's see where this leads me. Yeah, yeah. So was there, yeah. was there was there any point where or anybody or any any particular point where you enabled you to do that or did you have a role model for it? Was... Yeah, definitely. I mean, during that leadership program, and I'm sure like for all the other ones that are out there, you know, they do usually provide you with mentors, um, and then not just mentors, but actually, you, once you get into that um, space, you you're surrounded by people who are like minded, and yeah. I think. I, Really experienced that before because you know when you're growing up your friendship groups are different types of people um, but when you actually go into a space where you know you're all aiming for the the same thing which is to build on your personal development to build that confidence to get all these opportunities um, it actually creates a shift in your mind as well because you're learning from you know this person that you just met yesterday and you're, you're becoming friends with them and you're going back and forth um, so definitely I'll say my mentors at the time um, who created the, the leadership um, program and helped me through this. But then also the people, um, the other people that I, I met as well whilst on the, on the program, they inspired me too to push myself um, mm -hmm. because it almost opened another, another door that I never knew existed where actually, wow, I thought I had all these ideas, but look at this person. Mm -hmm. Not in a way that I was comparing myself, but I was, you could, you could say I was almost inspired by their way of thinking. Mm -hmm. and, and what, what what's the um the, the choice the choice of your of your business was was that something that you thought there was a niche in the market was there was there anything was it something that you you thought you would have liked to have had or, or what what was the what was the reason behind cho choosing that the business yeah so I chose to focus this on women um at that time all I knew is that I wanted to have um a network of young women who wanted to go into not just creative fields but also academic fields and in between as well mm -hmm. um at that time I didn't know I couldn't put a finger of what that in between was but I knew that's where I fit in um obviously now I know that as being a multi-hyphenate which I'm sure we'll go into much later on but at that mm -hmm. time I knew that I I wanted to go into the creative space but also loved the academic space I loved you know the course that I was 
you know, starting mm-hmm. and hopefully going to qualify in. Um, mm-hmm. So definitely, I think, you know, it, it did take a bit of time, um, but mm. I knew uh, at first moment that I wanted to focus on women. And as the business grew, as I got more feedback, actually, from um, from other women who um, I had asked to write on the blog, because um, She Aspires Skills Academy um, also has a blog where women share their experiences um, in their career field, uh, when they were students, we had like a on, on campus section at one point as well, uh, where we had lots of students sharing their own experiences. Um, because I did feel like I, I wanted to hear more voices. I wanted to see more stories that not just I could relate to, but that other people could relate to. And you know, one thing that still remains our ethos now is that uh, we are pretty unfiltered. Because I also felt that a lot of you know journeys that I was seeing at the time whether it's from maybe your your favorite celebrity or you know also was very much glorified and it was very much like okay I got from A to B but I knew that that's not the reality you you go through hurdles you go through um setbacks and things like that and whether that is in your career, whether that's even at university, um, a lot of people don't speak much about it. So um, I knew that I wanted to create that platform where people could share their own experiences um, in an unfiltered way um, and feel no shame. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so you've had, have you had a lot of um, success with people staying in contact? So once they come, they come to the platform and become part of the network, they stay part of the network and it builds. Uh, Is that yeah? how it works um I've had people who maybe started off as um writers and then have gone off to you know um, create some content for the social media um I've interviewed some people actually a really um quick story um the person so as you already mentioned in my introduction I am also part of a podcast called mm-hmm. She's in the Pod and uh, we were just thinking about you know how we actually met and one of the ladies I actually met through She Aspires, she, she was one of the first people that wrote for me um, a couple of years back. And we were just in awe because it's like, it's just a full 360 how I connected with her through She Aspires. And then, you know, we never, we didn't speak again sort of thing. Um, just, she, you know, she went off to do her own thing. And then we actually now came back to ho- co-hosting. So mm. You know, it just shows you the power of um, relationships, the power of connections. And um, I didn't really, I, it didn't really sink in at that time when I was at university, how, how meaningful and how much of an impact this would have, not just on myself, but on other people as well. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, that's a sort of um, advocacy in the group and the sort of support. Yeah. Network, you know, it's yeah. just the way forward, isn't it? With projects and moving on in life um yeah I can see that being very positive what about um any sort of challenges for running the business any kind of things Mm -hmm. that you you you've had to um you know reconsider how or rework uh, the 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 format or the style of the uh, of the you know of of the of the business is there any things that you have found really challenging about it Mm -hmm. um once I knew that I wanted to take this to the next level so i.e from a project to actually something that I'm moving towards uh, becoming a business one day a fully fledged business Um, so one of the things that I knew that I would struggle with is finances because when you are a student you are I I won't speak for everyone but most people are broke right most people don't have (laughs) you know you've got your student finance to 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 live on and you know you're out partying you're spending all that kind of stuff um so I knew that there were certain things that I wanted so let's say I wanted to I wanted to have a a a website for example I wanted to hire writers um because as much as people were writing for me it was for free Mm -hmm. out of their own volition which I was very grateful for um so finance was definitely a problem and I remember I remember the time where it actually clicked for me I think I was watching a YouTube video and someone was like just start where you are start with what you have right now and I was you know I was living on campus and um 
I think it's the John Henry Brooks building. I, I hope that's still what it's yeah. called. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm going there at night. They've got like a graphic suite. Um, I went in. You're not supposed to, but I, I just went in and, you know, I used my, so I studied A-level graphics and I used my experience with that and um, YouTube to create my website that night. Okay. So, <laughs> I, that, that's, that's literally what I did because I just knew that I couldn't afford to um, pay somebody to create a website for me. Mm. So I just let me just do it myself. It may not be the best, but sometimes it's not just, sometimes it's not about waiting until something is 100%. Sometimes it's about taking that leap of faith and actually, like I said before, utilizing what you have around you to mm. actually make a start you know mm. um, because making a start is better than not making a start at all and I knew that in the future once this does become um, you know a, a big business or um, gains more attention that I would be able to afford to, to pay somebody but in the meantime I needed mm. to I needed to make a start so like yeah. I said I did um, the website in John Henry Brooks building I'll be forever <laughs> great for that um, <laughs> um, and yeah great literally that's that's where it began I started networking I'm um, getting involved in um, I was the careers officer at ACS I met a few creators on there as well so I just really utilized what was around me um, mm-hmm. that didn't require money um, and yeah so it, it was a challenge and to be honest with you it's still finance can still be a challenge because you're always going to want to improve certain areas but what really grounds me um, is just like I said the idea of starting with what you have um, instead of not starting at all yeah yeah so so if so if you're coming up with a lesson for entrepreneurs it, it would be like this this gets get going and just to see and, yeah. and using your skills and using other people asking other people for help around you maybe that, yeah that, that and, can help. So you'd be so surprised with how wide your network actually is um, and you will also find that the older you get, you know, you know, your friends are going to different universities, they're studying different professions, um, they're gaining new skills and mm-hmm. also you gain new skills as well from online courses. So there's just, especially in the day and age that we are now with um, technology, mm-hmm. the sky's the limit. There's so many things that you can tap into just to get that knowledge that, you, you know, you don't necessarily have to pay for. Yeah. Yeah, so you know, it's, so that that's a, a great way thing way to think, isn't it? Don't just sit and try and do everything. You can ask. You can ask your friends and colleagues for help. Yeah, and um, going back to you saying about um, being a a, hy- a multi hyphenate, <laughs> um, what what would you say? What what are the benefits uh, of being a multi hyphenate? And and when did you realize you were? Ah. <laughs> uh. Do you know what? I love that word so much. I mean, I only realized, I want to say maybe four months ago, five months ago, that I was, okay, actually, I, I knew that I was a multi-hyphenate, but I couldn't, I couldn't define it. I couldn't put a name to it. So like I said earlier on that, you know, I really wanted to go into the creative space. But then at the same time, I loved, you know, the academic sector that I was going to go into in terms of mm-hmm. occupational therapy mm-hmm. and, you know, mental health or more clinical um stuff like that um so I always found myself tugging between the two I could never really let go of one mm. and I think I did really battle with that you know for a while where I, th- I thought why can't I just fit into like fit into a box um yeah. until it actually clicked for me where it was like actually no you don't need to fit into a box um mm. the why we have so many opportunities is because that one person you know took that leap of faith to you know step out of that box and create their own lane um mm-hmm. so um I think I don't know I must have been coming across an article or some sort and there was a description of what a multi-hyphenate was and I thought that is me that is me exactly and it just really bridges the gap between whatever your multiple interests are and it's not just about multiple interests it's also about having multiple skills and multiple things that you're good at you should mm. not have to let go of one or the other just because um, society tells you so. Mm. Um, so once I was able to define it, and once it was able, once I was able to kind of uh, let that sink in, mm. um, I just went just went out for it. I was just like, do you know what? 
this is me. Um, I'm going to be doing different things because I'm good at different things and I have different types of, you know, different passions and that's okay. So yeah. I always urge people to, yeah, find, identify what your particular interest areas are. Um, and if you feel like you have more strengths in one or the other, that's totally fine. But it doesn't mean that you need to box yourself. So um, I absolutely love that term, whoever came up with it kudos to you <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it's great and it's great not let like you say not having to be one or the other not having to think oh that's that's me I'm more I'm better at that or you know but if you can have different passions is, yeah. is, there, is there any going on from that uh, you, obviously you're an occupational therapist a senior occupational therapist um and yeah. you've gone into the psychiatric side of it and then also you're a business you're running the, your business um is there any synergies of those two different careers? Is there anything that's similar or anything you've learned from one to the other, you take to the other? Yeah, definitely. Um, how to interact with different types of people. Um, working as an occupational therapist, especially in mental health, you develop a lot of empathy for people. Um, you learn to, to work with those from different cultural backgrounds and different ways of thinking. Um, mm -hmm. So that has definitely helped me in my business now where you, you know, especially when you're going to networking events or um, you're doing collaborations, you learn to work with different types of people. You learn to have empathy for others and you also learn to have patience because um, of course, in the, in the line of work that I do right now, it's, it, it's very challenging um, just because of the nature of um, the setting that I'm in. But then that also relates that I can also transfer those skills um, you know, into running my business where it's not always going to be a, as linear as I would like it to be. Sometimes you do hit that, that rock or you hit that bump. Um, and, you know, sometimes you do have to be resilient when people may not have um, faith in an idea that you have, or um, they may say negative things. That's just reality of how this world is. Um, so definitely there's a lot of synergy and that's why I keep saying that, you know, <laughs> as much as we have all these different sectors, um, you'd be very surprised with how everything is just interlinked. Um, it's just about having a different perspe uh, perspective and, you know, wanting to utilize those transferable skills. Yeah, yeah, that's that's great. And I suppose the, the running the two pieces, the having the two careers, is something around time oh. time management, isn't it? <laughs> Do yeah. you ever have any free time? <laughs> I love time management, and to be very frank with you, I don't think I have really gotten to that stage yet. Um, even right now, I'm in my car because. I, I knew that I was going to do this, but because of timing and the type of setting that I work in, sometimes things don't go to plan. But it's just about kind of, you know, having that balance um, and not overworking yourself. So if you are like a lot of young people nowadays, and especially those who are at university, if you do have a side hustle or passion project or something that you're working on and you're studying or you're working at the same time, you know, you, you have to have a balance between the two and you also need to prioritize. So when I was um, starting up She Is Five Skills Academy uh, whilst I, I was at university, I knew that I needed to prioritize university, my course, because mm. if I don't, I, I would fail and I had much more to lose. Um, so in that sense, it was probably 80-20 in terms of the ratio. Mm. Um, and I had to be okay with that. Um, and it also depends on the type of person you are. Some people can just go full out. But for me, I knew that for my mental health and my well-being, that if I put so much pressure on myself to try and give my all to, to both of them equally, um, I would burn out. Um, so right now, I'm just still in the process of finding that balance, prioritizing um, and learning when to say no to things as well. Yeah. Um, is quite important to you and that's something that you you learn as you go it's not something that really clicks for you um at the get-go um so it's yeah it's just about practicing that um assertiveness and um willingness to put yourself first yes yeah oh, that's what I was gonna say have you got any sort of other sort of tips so you you know you're saying about uh, you know being able to say no sometimes and uh yeah. you, you mentioned about the networks and you know yeah. confidence in your ideas and resilience um, yeah 
Is any other any other tip, tips you can think of for people wanting to set something up, like you know, a, a business like uh, one uh, an entrepreneurial business? I, I would definitely. I mean, the first thing is to be kind to yourself. I think if you are if you've already started you know, your business and you're, you're juggling, you're trying to juggle, juggle the both of them, whether it's with work, whether it's um, being a student, you need to be kind to yourself and you need to actually identify. I, I always do this thing where I identify my strengths first. Like, what am I doing that's, you know, excellent? You know, mm. praise yourself is really important because mm. sometimes, um, whether it's in business, whether it, even in, as a student, sometimes it might just, it, sometimes it just feels that the, the end goal is so far ahead um, that you know you're trying you're trying maybe you're, you're falling down a few times and sometimes it might feel that you're not getting anywhere uh, when in actual fact you are achieving things but because your eye is so set on that end goal you're missing you're missing everything else that you're doing yeah. um, and it's, so it's really important to kind of just sit back reflect and look at okay actually I was able to stick to my routine for two weeks that's excellent or I was able to send an x amount of emails you know whatever your you know your smaller I always like to call them sub goals were and that you achieved praise yourself for achieving that because that gives you a boost of confidence and that changes your mindset a lot of you know the struggle with um maybe burnout or lack of motivation it's all about the mindset it's all about how much pressure you're putting on yourself on top of what other people are putting on you yeah. Um, so that would definitely be the first thing and then obviously second of all you know try and organize your life as much as possible use a diary use a planner um, use external um, resources to help you with that don't try and cram it all in your head because uh, it's just not really going to work out um, not for me anyways I always say that I have a I have a memory of a goldfish like I just forget stuff like this so I always have to write things down and that works for me find what works for you yeah exactly find it find your find your routine I, I suppose a, a lot of entrepreneurs that we we talked to have got the two two careers going on for quite a while or maybe forever <laughs> you know yeah. some people there just do one business and then there might be a bit more business uh, money pressure then <laughs> that's the hmm. different side of it isn't it but um um re- reading back on your your the business you're running um I, I just I was just thinking about you're saying about seeing changes with um you know the Aspire Skills Academy is about trying to find changes to traditional areas and um Mm -hmm. back on your sort of motto around that and your mission statement uh, what what do you see how would you like these to change and can you have you seen change uh, since you started running the the platform and and focusing on these in these areas and the work you've been doing with the advocacy and the 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 podcasting have you seen a little bit changes in these traditional areas um um, how, how do you see that working in the future so yeah definitely I've seen a lot of changes um in terms of just going back to your first question like what kind of changes was I expecting um for definitely like I said my focus is on women and it's seeing women in when I say non-traditional spaces I mean spaces that were and are still heavily um male dominated Mm. you know whether that it's it's in finance whether that's in um, construction you know um or you know different different types of areas I really wanted to see that change where it didn't it didn't seem like a surprise if a woman was the head of a firm or something like that or if a woman was a um was an engineer or was it was in construction um and I always go back to you know how we you know are conditioned from mm. when we are really small take for example when you you look at your old textbooks and you see the the woman as the baker and then you see the man as the builder you know so that's it's um you know it's conditioned um to in us you know since we're young so of course it's going to stay with us as we get older but I think now um because of social media because of the opportunities that are being brought out because of women being um, resilient and women you know speaking out more um and being given the platform to speak out more as well because it's not I think who's, who said it's not I think it was Meghan Markle who said about you know it's not that women don't have a voice it's that we weren't allowed to speak up before we didn't have that platform before so mm-hmm. now that we have that I think it's definitely 
it's definitely changing it's definitely improving uh but work still needs to be done in terms of um the pay um the uh, discrepancies um the type of jobs are offered um the harassment that's in the workplace for example so we at SASA we tend to focus mainly on careers and workplace so there's definitely a lot more there's definitely a lot more uh work to be done um but I do I do feel confident that you know we are we are you know setting a good we're setting a good path for the younger generation and I think as the generations kind of come they they get more confident um I can just imagine in 10 years time you know we'll have all sorts of different roles developing for women um so yeah there's definitely been change but we still need to work at it I would say I wouldn't say that we're we're there yet and that's why you know platforms and businesses like ourselves you know and you know because there there are loads of other uh, women empowerment businesses um are excellent because we can kind of come together to you know build that platform for for women and build that you know opportunity that women never once got yeah and 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 what what are your um uh, yeah that's interesting and I think you're you're right from social media it's a big push for a lot you know you see a lot of stories a lot of people doing different things and there's a a different way of communicating isn't it which is great and spread the word and I think Mm. um I was was just thinking about your business and where where you saw it going have you have you are you where you want to be with it or have you got bigger dreams for it or is it is it just where Uh where you what what, how how you what's the challenge what what, what's the next steps with the business that definitely bigger dreams um where it is now I never thought it even could be where it is now and I think you know obviously I still I think about you know all the all the goals I had that maybe I haven't achieved whether it's due to the pandemic whether it's due to um you know me still working a full-time job because that's a really important factor and that's something I think a lot of people that might be in a similar situation to me have to almost accept that as long as you are working a full-time job or just working a job in general and also working on your side hustle at the same time um it might take a bit longer Hmm. so I'm I'm just in that stage of okay I know it's going to take a lot longer but let me keep that momentum um going um so I definitely have big dreams for Sasa um the products in terms of online resources for women hopefully now you know once everything starts to open up more uh, we'll start to go back into doing events and just become more um make, make our mark more uh, within within this industry and you know for for women to look at whenever they need advice or whenever they want to relate to somebody in the career sector and also kind of shed the light on again like I said being a multi-hyphenate and having all these passion and ha- passions and having all these interests and and just really putting that at the forefront because mm. that's what the generation is becoming we're becoming so multi-skilled mm. Mm. yeah and I think that's right and it's almost that you you can t- you can use all those different skills in different ways now it's not like you're, you're siloed as much so uh, you know to in- rejoice it <laughs> and you know yeah. in- enjoy, enjoy it um so your your journey's been so interesting, <laughs> and kind of starting at the starting with the Brooks Union, <laughs> and we yeah. you know, obviously came back and talked the other day with Brooks Union and uh, um, being a role model and mentoring and and supporting women is great. Uh, I I just I, I wonder whether there's any um, taking it out to the audience whether they've got any particular questions for you because um, you know we it would be nice if there's any specific questions that people would like to ask you from the audience I'll just have a quick check and uh, have a little look on the Q&A so if anyone in the audience would like to post I see Anna's posted one um just post on just post on the chat or the question so we've got one question from Anna um Burrows and oh she was interested in the in the program that you took the leadership program um yeah was it uh, how much did it cost and 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 how long did it take to complete so she was uh, interested in that early course that you did when you were inspired and um, just thought she'd become okay. an entrepreneur so, um that course was free um because I, I think they received some funding from the government it was with seo london 
Um, I think they're still around. Uh, I'm just, I'm not sure if they still have any more leadership programs. Um, but at the time that I found out about it, um, it was free. Um, they selected only a handful of uh, people in the UK. Um, and I kind of just needed, I applied via, I think I needed to talk about, you know, my passions. And um, I think they asked like a specific question. So it was very essay based. Um, mm. And then I, I, I got in and again, you know, I had the opportunity um, during that time to go to um, the United Nations in Switzerland, Geneva, because of that program. Um, and, you know, I was very much interested in the health side of things and also gender equality. And um, so I did that. And, I, and actually from that leadership program, um, once I finished university, I think it was in 20, 2019, um, I applied for the, the uh, Y7 summit which is the the youth version of the g7 summit Mm -hmm. uh, which is happening in france Mm -hmm. and um that was run by the future leaders network so actually they they have quite a few programs um running and coming up as well so Mm -hmm. i i applied i got selected to represent the uk um again it was in gender um equality um which i was more focused on so there are quite a few free opportunities in in the uk um, if you just kind of do a Google search or they're quite um, prevalent in social, on social media too. But definitely check out the Future Leaders Network. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's great. Um, oh, and another one from Rebecca, uh, Rebecca Disney. Um, how does the business work in terms of finances? How do you make a profit, et cetera? Do the, do the customers pay for the service? Yeah, so- that's a really good question. So... Prior to COVID happening, we were making money mainly through um, events that we were running. Um, Our last event being the She Creates event, which uh, was where we got different businesses to kind of showcase their products. Um, They would sell um, their services and then we would get a percentage of that on top of the ticket sales that we had. So we had quite a few people attend. I think it was like between... 150 to 200 um wasn't it you know people coming in and out but they had to get a ticket to actually get in in the first place um Mm -hmm. and then also through collaborations um that we've done in the past whether it's with universities um or with uh, brands who wanted to showcase their products on our website so those were the main um and then also um ads on our on our website too um, we tried to create more we tried to select relevant ads um, for those that um, do get in top contact with us or if we actually reach out to um, brands which we feel maybe share the, the same ethos as us on there. So um, that's mainly how we've been making our financial income. It hasn't been a lot. We haven't received uh, much funding either. Uh, but again, that is something that you know we're looking to work towards uh, with some of our products which will be coming out this year actually before the end of the summer um, we've got a product that's coming out um, which will hopefully also help in that financial aspect as well. Mm. Great so I suppose with the events uh, hopefully starting up again things will change again for you won't they we'll have more face-to-face yeah. events hopefully next year Definitely. we're all hoping. Yeah, we hope so. but then also, yeah. And but then at the same time, again, like this whole pandemic has also showed you that, yeah, we can't have, we couldn't have face to face events, but we were so creative enough to have online events, and a lot yeah. of them have turned out really great. So, you know, we'll just yeah. kind of have to see yeah. how things go, and if it means that we have to do an online event, then we'll just have to be as creative as we can. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely get a different reach with the online and, more, you know, more attendees from different, you know, don't have to be right in Oxford or wherever you're hosting it. Yeah. It's great for us as well. We found yeah. <laughs> or can be in a car. Exactly. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but we'll definitely, just to say to everyone, we'll definitely share um, Jenny's links in the email that goes out after the webinar yeah. um, tomorrow and um, the, web, the you know, your, your website and your, your handles mm-hmm. as well. So you can connect with Jenny as well um, after, after the webinar. Um, 
One, one thing that came through to me, which I wanted to ask you, is um, there was a question about coaching and mentoring, a mentee, a being a mentee or being a mentor or a coach. Um, is, is this something that you, you mentioned that you had some people were mentoring you, you had a mentor? Where, can, where, can, where would you suggest that um, a person finds a mentor or a mentee uh, to, be, to be a mentor? Um, yeah. Is there a particular network if you're an entrepreneur that you can connect up? I mean, we have our weeds and there's mentoring within Brooks, but that's different because it's more maybe more generic. But there would we can promote that as well. But is there anything specific for entrepreneurs that you could a network that you can connect up with? Yeah. Um, so the first one that comes to my mind is Albright Digital, I think it is. It's either Albright or it's Albright Digital. Um, so I recently, when I say maybe like two months ago, um, signed up to um, their mailing list um, and I know quite a few people who work within the team as well and they have um, a, a program I forgot what it's called but again we can can just link that um, in after the after this um, this session um, they mm. provide a lot of mentorship for uh, female entrepreneurs um, and I absolutely love them because they're so diverse it's um, women who are at different stages as well because you know oftentimes at least in my experience back then when I was searching for mentors um, maybe on Google or, or something I always felt like oh maybe I wasn't at the stage of um, being that you know entrepreneur mentee that maybe they they needed at the time so um, they take women of you know different uh, backgrounds at different stages and it feels more like a community um, and then when they do match you up with somebody to um, you know to mentor you um, they they do really pay attention to what your interests are you know what you what information you provide to them as well um, so definitely you know check the, them out and also they they have online resources and courses um, that you can access to okay. um, Yep. And then, again, going back to the Future Leaders um, Network, um, a lot of my mentors were actually from that um, network that I joined in 2019. Um, mm -hmm. So check them out. If you're into, you know, politics as well, um, they have quite a few people who um, own businesses too. Um, and you'd be very surprised. I mean, you've got people who are doctors and then you've got somebody who works in the creative arts. So it's, it's, it's such a diverse network that they have going on there. No, that's great. That's that's great to, to share that um, information. Um, uh, we, again, I've just noticed that, oh, D um, D Dylan, uh, our colleague has been posting on the chat all the, all Jenny's links. So you've, you're, you're fully connected. Okay. But I will put thank it in our, the email as well. Great. Thank you. Um, another question from Rebecca, um, talking about your OT job, um, your, your oh. other job. <laughs> We've talked to yeah. us about your entrepreneur uh, work. And she's saying, um, can you tell me a bit about the job and, and where and where you're based and what you would like to go on to do with that? Is there any other, uh, you know, move are you where you want to be in that career? Where do you see yourself going? And and um, what do you like about the job? And, you know, um, you said a little bit earlier, didn't you, about this psych yeah. psychiatric side of it. Um, yeah. Is there anything else you can add? Yeah, so as an occupational therapist in general, we um, work towards um, enabling people to find their independence, uh, whether it's after an accident, um, whilst they have a, a mental health issue, um, just in different types of areas. And uh, we are dual trained, so in physical and mental health. So I... I think it was maybe due to the placements that I had, I was, re I really gravitated towards the mental health side, you know, um, seeing people's progress and uh, working with those who had, um, who have psychotic um, illnesses as well. So as mentioned, I work in a psychiatric setting. It's actually a psychiatric forensic setting. So that me basically means that my service users have, of course, a mental um condition mental health condition like schizophrenia psychosis personality disorder um like it, it, it ranges but then at the same time they also have a criminal background um so i receive um patients who might be um transferred from prison um um, on diff various different sections and I work with the clinical team to rehabilitate them basically um, and get them back into the community um, of course the medical team they will 
work with like the medication but specifically for OT it's about um, re-engaging in activity it's about um, building that confidence to integrate back into society and we do a lot of risk assessments as well depending on um, their level of risk um, their crime history um, too and we do a lot of report writing where we focus on their activities of daily living and the premises really is that occupation um, can be anything and we don't limit op- occupation just to a job. Occupation could be a hobby. It could be just uh, maybe going out for a walk. Um, so we do encourage um, our service users to um, um, focus on what their interests are and their, their strengths and we build on that. Um, so that in, in a very short Snip, a, a snapshot is what my job is about um am i where am i where i i don't know if the question was am i where i'm yeah where I where you, where you, I'm, yeah sorry just just where, where um, um, what's just next steps or is that is that where you want to be have you got any next steps to that that career um so i started so in the nhs in general you start as a band five so i'm now a band six um and i i kind of went there quite quickly so I'm definitely where I want to be right now in terms of uh, my professional development um in terms of the area that I am currently in I think I've kind of found my my passion um so I definitely want to stay within that mental health sector however like I said there's so many subsections um so I definitely want to go into um criminal justice a bit more even though I'm already working with them and just um try out different types of client groups so I'm working with um uh, working age adults men specifically so I might want to go into older adults in the future I'm not too sure um but what's really great about this role is that you you know jobs are quite easy to find and mm. there's so many opportunities in 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 the world of occupational therapy mm. it, it sounds like it's been quite a, a flexible uh, career whereas you can pick up different you know you can you have your ot training but you can also develop and enhance different parts to it you've gone on the psychiatric yeah. side and there's you know, exactly. it's not a straight career you can ble- you can branch off and uh, have specialisms yeah, and I think even how I came to choosing <laughs> occupational therapy, I it's so weird because now that I'm looking back at it, I've, I've always been this way where I've kind of struggled with academic creative. And as an OT, you get to be both. You yeah. have to problem solve. You've got to be creative because you're working with different types of people. So you've got to work around their their needs and um, their, their current presentations. So, yeah, it kind of worked out for me in in that sense mm. yeah no it's, that's really interesting it's really interesting to hear about your other career as well um <laughs> <laughs> which is really, it's very it sounds life. very exciting <laughs> your other life yeah <laughs> yeah no that sounds great okay and any any other questions from the audience i think we've uh we've, we've, we've had a few um and if they're I think that that's it. And you've got a, great, a nice comment from Sue saying that she's really enjoyed the conversation. Thanks for being so open. Thank you so uh, much. <laughs> and um, I think, I think, I think that's it, but it's been, it's been, you know, it's been so interesting <laughs> and um, we'll, you know, we'll share again all the inter, in the links um, for, for Jenny. And so you can connect up with her separately. Yeah. Um, we're hoping that she'll do some more work, maybe be a mentor another conversation Jenny for us (laughs) separately if you can fit it in if you can fit it in yeah I'd love to I mean even now like I guess you could call it informal mentoring like I get questions all the time and I'm more than happy to to answer them and to connect with people um so yeah definitely contact me if there's any questions that you have or anything of that um in that line so I'm, I'm more than happy to share my knowledge and maybe even get some knowledge from some of you guys too that sounds good yeah I'm, I'm sure you'll get I'm sure you'll get a lot of people connecting up and and <laughs> asking you I mean that's the best way just to ask ask somebody a question about something and uh, you know now you've connected it's great um exactly. so yeah so well you know thank you thank you very much for tonight and giving your time I know you know it's been a different evening for you like <laughs> not not at home yet <laughs> not yet <laughs> But, uh, but it's been really interesting for me as well so oh, thank you so much for having me I've really enjoyed this conversation and I hope you know we get to have many more 
that yeah, is. So yeah. this is a great opportunity, an opportunity that I was very grateful for when I was at university. And um, I'm grateful that this has continued for, for some of the other students or, um, you know, people who are connected to Brooks um, who are watching this. Great. Yeah, that's lovely. Well, thank you very much. And um, um, just to the, the audience, thanks for attending. And I hope you enjoyed tonight. We're that we've got another alumni and alumna speaking next Wednesday, uh, Pradeepa, um, who's talking about a, a career in tech sales. Um, and so join us next week um, for her at 530 at the same time. And um, yeah, thank you. Thank you again, Jenny, and have a great evening. Enjoy a bit of sunshine. And uh, <laughs> Thank you. Been, you too. It's been very interesting. Thank you for giving your time to us. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.